College Football's Great Unknowns, Volume 1, 2, 3. On Twitter, I asked y'all this. What are the greatest unknowns when it comes to the college football season in 2023? Y'all answered in full force, as you always do. Like I said, we got the best audience in all of college football. Nay, the best community in all of college football. So without further ado, I want to jump into some of y'all's great unknowns. And this is a tremendous handle that we got. At Don't Ask Me Yo. How about that handle, Nick? Absolutely love that. Don't Ask Me Yo says, can Florida win more than six games? That's a very great unknown. Vegas has them right around five and a half wins for the over-under win total. To me, that unknown lies with the unknowns within the team, which is kind of an obvious thing to say. But to put it more simply, the unknowns are with the holes they need to patch. And the most glaring hole they need to patch is the defensive depth. Last year, we saw it. They ran out of gas in multiple games. I don't mean stamina in terms of that first line of defense, because they had good talent on the first line of defense defensively. But behind that first line, behind those starters, it was a pretty noticeable drop-off. And in the SEC, you can't have a lack of depth and expect to compete how you want to compete. So for Florida... We believe and have heard that the depth has been improved under Austin Armstrong, the new DC there. I'm curious to see how that looks because that has to be a thing for them if they are going to win six games. The other part of that is you need consistent level seven quarterback play from Graham Mertz. Say, Jetty, what does that mean? Anthony Richardson last year, multiple times, played at 10 out of 10. Either kept you in the game or won you the game. Kept you in the game against Tennessee, won you the game against Utah. There were days where you just sat back as a Florida fan and said, you know what? It's just, it's AR's day. He's him. Glad we have number 15 on the roster. There were other times where AR played right around like a four. Times where AR was kind of a liability, if we're being real. The Missouri game, threw for less than 100 yards. Like, for Anthony Richardson, the spectrum of performances for him, week in and week out, was so grand And I'm not here to say that that made Florida worse, but I do think you asked the question, what does Florida look like last year if they just get a 7 out of 10 every single week? Two touchdowns, one pick, 200 yards. What do we look like week in and week out? I think you can can very reasonably make the argument that Florida probably is a 7-8 win team a year ago, and I think they definitely are a 6 win team this coming season if they get consistent quarterback play at a level 7, again, from Graham Mertz. So I'm not asking you to be Anthony Richardson. I'm asking you to be consistent. I'm asking you to minimize the turnovers. And I'm asking you to make the open throws. Because if the offensive line is up to par, that's the other question mark, I suppose. But the backfield is stocked with some dudes now. Trevor Etienne, Montrell Johnson, I think quietly one of the best running back combos in the country. Both averaged well over five yards a carry last year. Like They got some dudes now they can hand the rock to. Two different dudes, so you got some fresh legs there. You want to rotate them in, drive in, and drive out. Like They got some pieces to be, I think, pretty sneaky offensively. But a lot of it lies with Graham Mertz keeping them honest, and it lies with the defense putting the offense in good positions. Kind of the way this whole thing works, as you all definitely already understand. But to zoom it out, the question within this question, the, the great unknown of if Florida wins six games, what would that mean? It means you can sell trajectory to recruits. And we've said that a couple times on this show for y'all that have tuned in for any length of time. We've talked about Florida selling trajectory to recruits. If Florida goes out and wins five games, they miss a bowl game, you got to go to recruits and say, hey, come be a part of the turnaround. Come be a part of the vision. Hey, we're, we're trying to get this thing headed the right direction. We need guys like you to be a part of it. But if you win six games, dare I say, you make a one game improvement, which is probably what you would like to have happen if you're a Florida Gator fan at at the least, seven games, one win improvement. Then you go and tell kids, hey, you see where this thing is going, all right? We're starting to climb. Seven wins in the SEC, that is no slouch of an accomplishment. Come be a part of what we're doing here. Come help us get this thing even further the right direction. We're not taking steps backwards. We're taking steps forwards, and we need you to really help us just blow this whole thing up. Florida, again, I'll say it, they've recruited really well so far. A long way to go till signing day, but the Gators are in very good position. Solid performance on the, on the field. Seven wins, which would be over six wins. A great unknown, but I think that's what it would require to, to bolster that even more. All right? Make sure you're subscribed. 
Thank you for being tuned in. All y'all that are tuned in currently on the YouTube channel, if you could like the video, that little thumbs up icon under the picture and get us over 100 likes before we get off air, that would be greatly appreciated. So thank you in advance for that. Trey M reached out and his great unknown is, can Notre Dame return to the playoffs with the schedule that they have? And it's a very good question. Notre Dame, obviously independent, not in a conference, but even still, they play Ohio State, they play USC, and they play at Clemson. So three teams that you could very reasonably make an argument for are playoff teams in themselves. So how that would happen, I think Sam Hartman would be as advertised. I don't have a ton of concerns about him being as advertised. I think he's going to be a stud for you. The defense plays to the level they played at a season ago. Jordan Botello, I keep saying it. I'm, I'm, I'm first team, all Jordan Botello stand right here. We love Jordan Botello on this program, and we think he's going to pop this year. Never liked to lose Isaiah Foskey, but Jordan Mattel is going to be a guy. So the defense holds up there into the bargain. How this would happen is a playmaker on the outside steps up. Who that is, I don't know. Jaden Greyhouse looked, looked great in the spring game. Um, Chris Tyree is a the guy they've been buzzing about. Like, there's, there's some pieces here at Notre Dame to be excited about, but we want to see them prove it on the field. And there's a long list of receivers we could talk through. But what would it mean if they were to be able to make the college football playoff? Well, with that schedule, the assumption would be they have to win at least two of those three. More than likely, probably have to beat all three of those teams and be probably undefeated because you don't have that last data point from conference championship weekend. But if all that happens, think about what it would say about Notre Dame. All three of those teams, I think you probably have to beat them in different ways. USC, it could be a shootout. Clemson, they're going to be tough defensively. Ohio State's kind of a, a mix of both, honestly, with how good they are on the defensive line and having Mar Marvin Harrison Jr. recover. Like, if Notre Dame is able to make the college football playoff, playing all three of those teams, they are a very legitimate title contender. Because that means that Marcus Freeman has cultivated now a battle-tested group should they get through that gauntlet and make the playoff, and they're a team that has seen elite competition consistently throughout the year. Now, the SEC gets a lot of credit, and it should, but you play those three teams, I mean, that is a serious, serious pecking order for them to go through. So I'm excited to see what Notre Dame does in that, but like I said, Notre Dame, if they get through that well-rounded team, very versatile, and we'd have to really talk about Notre Dame being a not just college football playoff contender if they were to get through that, but being a national title contender. So keep an eye on the Irish here. Balix 2035, his great unknown is Alabama's running back room potentially overperforming. And if this happens, if Jason McClellan and Justice Haynes, the freshman who looked real good in that spring game, if they overperform along with the rest of that group, Alabama is going to be a college football playoff team. Why? Because college football is cyclical. Like, previously before we got into the spread you out go no huddle go tempo it was play in the trenches run the football play good defense like a version of that is kind of what won you national titles ask Nick Saban with Trent Richardson and what that group did and then it became like I was talking about a little more spread out a little more up tempo a little bit more you got to score 40 you got to score 50 but now it's starting to come back around. The cycle is starting to come back around to how I think Nick Saban wants it, which is that we're going to control the line of scrimmage. We're going to move you against your will. Ain't none you can do about it. That's what Bama's going back to. I think that's one of the reasons why I believe Nick Saban hired Tommy Reese because they ran the ball really well at Notre Dame. And so they're going to ask a lot of this group. This running back room along with the offensive line, that's going to be the engine for the offense. Everybody's talking about the quarterback room, who's going to start, who's not going to start. Like, I'm here for that as well. I'm all about that conversation. I think it's important. I don't think it's nearly as important as some people want to make it out to be. Because the quarterback's going to be responsible for converting third and three, third and two, hitting the open shot when the safeties creep up. Like, that's going to be what the quarterback has to do and not give the ball to the other team. If this running back room overperforms, they're going to be a college football playoff team. I'm telling you right now. Now, if they want to win a national title, got to have something to go with the running back room. Then you look back at the quarterback and say, okay, we need you to get us over the hump. Or we need the defense to play 
at an elite level. But if they overperform in the running back room, Alabama will be a college football playoff team. Mark my words. Last one we got from y'all is, can Colorado football make a bowl game this year? And this is a great question. This is a great unknown. This, this is potentially the greatest unknown of the entire 2023 season. Reason for that being, we have never seen anything like what Deion Sanders is doing in Boulder, Colorado, with the nature of just flipping the entire roster from what it was a year ago. The players that were a part of the 1-11 season at Colorado last year, they're not really there anymore, with the exception of like a handful of players. Coach Prime has brought in a whole new roster. And the best way I can describe this is whenever like an old restaurant closes up shop and it shuts down and it's done, and then a new restaurant comes in and opens its doors in that same building, you kind of have like an idea of what to expect. You kind of have like memories from the last restaurant that used to be in that same building, but it's a new menu. It looks different. It smells different. It feels different when you walk in there. So you have this former thought about what that, place was but in reality when you walk into that new restaurant you have no idea what to expect short of reading the menu short of looking at that roster you have no idea what to expect at Colorado this 2023 season and I don't either Vegas thinks they'll be somewhere around four-ish wins nobody knows because we've never seen anything like this in college football it is a complete unknown that's why it's a great question but if Colorado is to make a bowl game in 2023, it means that Deion Sanders and his system worked. It means that you can flip your entire roster in the span of an offseason and be able to be successful. Why? Because Coach Prime just did it and made a bowl game in year one. Mark my words, if they make a bowl game in year one, that is an unbelievable success for Coach Prime. If that's year one, that is absolutely phenomenal. Because that would mean that he was able to develop this roster, make them mesh, allow the staff and the roster to get on the same page. And it means that Travis Hunter and Shadour Sanders, who both came from the FCS level, were always as advertised when they got to the Power Five. That's what it would mean. Lastly, it would mean that what Deion Sanders did at Colorado is the blueprint now for every single first-year head coach across the country. Hey, well, we won two games the year before. Doesn't matter. You see what Coach Prime did at Colorado? Better hit the portal. Better get to work. No longer is it grind it out and eventually build to it and eventually recruit three or four recruiting classes and get to where you want to go. It's like, if Coach Prime can make a bowl game in year one, getting 50-plus new transfers, that's the formula we want. That's the expectation we're allowed to have. So a lot of unknowns out there for the college football season in 2023. A lot of great unknowns from y'all. Keep them coming. We'll keep this thing rolling, but we appreciate y'all making this happen. And a lot of great thoughts there. And uh, man, I can't wait. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.